Hello everyone and welcome back guys to a brand new video. We're Stevie here back with round 13 of season 1 of the F122 Haas Road to Glory. Yesterday we're here back for the Hungarian Grand Prix. If you missed out on the last race from La Castellet, I would highly, highly recommend going back and checking out the French Grand Prix. Very, very exciting. Seems pretty much every weekend at the moment we seem to have our late race battle uh, with our teammate Mick Schumacher there. But yeah, the less said about that, the better. Just, just for the moment, of course, because of spoilers. But of course, a massive thank you as well to all of you guys for the continued support on the channel at the moment. You know, we're getting very much closer to 80,000 subscribers at the time we're recording this. You know, if you're new around here and you're not already subscribed, please do consider doing so. It would be greatly greatly appreciated but yeah heading into the hungarian gp we've brought more upgrades to the car you can see we have still got one major upgrade going on the chassis at the moment it's pretty much even between ourselves and mclaren at this stage of the game with mercedes and red bull as well as ferrari not too far away there so continuing on the development push at this stage of the season just going to double check don't think we need to change or oh, we might need to change a few components actually as we get into this weekend they don't really want to take grid penalties around Hungary because we know how difficult it can be to overtake. Championship wise though we're still sat in seventh place at the moment a little way off the Mercedes duo but just building up a gap over Fernando Alonso just behind us there. Mick Schumacher has been on a great run of form in recent races as well he should try and get the jump on Joe Guan Yu maybe even today uh, before we head into the summer break there but yeah comfortably now ahead of Alpine as well in the Constructors Championship. Things are slotting together really nicely at this stage of the game, but fingers crossed the Hungarian GP this weekend, that can continue. Let's get into qualifying then here at Magyar Nagadic. Right, well, qualifying day then here from the Hungara ring, and it was meant to be full wet conditions throughout Saturday's running. That doesn't seem to be the case at the moment. The percentage chance of rain is meant to go up as the session goes on, but yeah, there's certainly no rain in sight at the moment, and beautiful sunny skies here from the Hungara ring. One issue I have got, I, I haven't upped the AR yet on the new patch, so if we end up massively out overachieving ourselves here, then you guys know why. I just completely forgot about it before we jumped into this race today. So I'm definitely going to get it tweaked back up before we get into the Grand Prix itself. But Max Verstappen immediately sets to 17.7. Well, we have to double check ourselves through turn four. Um, but yeah, we might accidentally just go right up towards the front here as purple in sector one through the final couple of corners then of the Hungarian GP circuit. Just trying to keep it nice and tidy out in the final turn. Use a little bit of curb on the exit. And we immediately do a 16-9 there, quicker than Fernando Alonso. Where's Pierre Gaza? Sorry, Sonoda's going to go P3. But we go fastest then at the end of the first runs, which is kind of a good thing, but kind of not all at the same time. There we go, George Russell with a much better representative. Well, Mick Schumacher then, only a couple of tenths away from me at the moment as we get ready to start our final run here in qualifying. Let's wait and see what sort of time we can try and get this thing down to. I mean, McLaren, Lando, Norris is up in like P5, if I'm not mistaken at the moment. Bottas has gone quicker than us, so maybe the qualifying pace isn't as OP as I had at once worried. The only other issue we've got is Nicholas Latifi sat right there in front. We try and put the power down out of turn one. Nice and tidy. Then little kick from the rear end as we sneak our way down through okay, turn two. Try and keep the car over to the left before you flick it through the right there. Team's still worried about the rain, but a tenth up as we get towards the end of sector one there. Through turn four, nice and committed, nice and tidy that time round. As we head through the next turn there, just trying to put the power down. But now we're going to be sat in the dirty air of the Williams here. Short shift on the way through the chicane there, just so you can try and put the power down on the exit. And then just try Plug the apex there. That corner I always hate around this track, but we're getting all over the gearbox of the Williams at the moment. So we run a little bit wide. So we head down in towards the final sector. Of course, dirty air, not as big a thing in 2022, but still certainly an issue on the games as Latifi. I thought he was going to come to the end of his run and then bail back out into the pit lane here, but at the moment, we're barely going to find any more time as George Russell, Mr. Saturday himself goes even faster but at the final corner we're pushing Latifi along and we only stay P8 there that is annoying 
Well, there we go then. Charles Leclerc pole position on a 116. Pretty much bang on there, a 116. Two tenths clear of George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. Max Verstappen in P4 there. And Lando Norris, a brilliant uh, lap by him to go P5 there. Sainz, Bottas, Ricardo, myself and Perez rounding out the top 10 then here for the Hungarian Grand Prix there. I mean, all the cars separated by two seconds. But yeah, I mean, P9 with a face full of Williams for motor lap isn't the most disappointing thing in the world. Let's get into it then here for the Hungarian GP. This channel is proudly sponsored by Bybit, the official crypto partner of Red Bull's Formula One team. I've been using their platform for my personal crypto savings over the last few months, and when they got in touch to support the channel, I was super, super excited. Currently, they're offering you guys a special new promo for the first 100 of you to deposit $10 or more onto the platform. You'll get another $10 free. Also, five lucky winners will get their initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. That means if you deposited $1,000 onto the platform using my codes below, you could be within a chance to get another $1,000 completely free. We've seen the landscape around crypto drastically change over the last couple of years and I genuinely believe it holds an important place in our future. However, please be careful as always when trading as you are liable uh, to lose money. But if you're interested and you're 18 or older, click the link down below to get started and see why Red Bull and myself as well as thousands of others trust Bybit as their crypto. Welcome to Budapest once again for another round of Formula One action. Historically, a good race for first-time victories, with Button, Hill, Alonso and Heike Kovalainen all reaching the top step of the podium for the very first time right here. Located 12 miles northeast of the Hungarian capital Budapest, the 14 corners of the Hungaro Ring are steeped in history and prestige. Overtaking's always been difficult on this technical 2.7 mile track, but the last few years in particular have turned up some exceptional races. So let's hope we're in for another one here today. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. Charles Leclerc lines up on pole position, just ahead of George Russell, who starts this event from P2. Looking at the rest of today's grid, we have Hamilton, Verstappen, Lando Norris, and Sainz, Mr. Monaco, Perez, Ocon, and Yuki Tsunoda, Fernando Alonso, Mick Schumacher, Lance Stroll, and Albon, Joe, Bottas, they've taken a grid penalty. Sebastian Vettel and Daniel Ricciardo. Gasly and Nicholas Latifi. And with lights out just moments away, it's time to go down to the track. And a warm welcome to Natalie Pinkham, who's beside me in the commentary box today. Why don't we start by talking about Carlos Sainz? That was a great win in the last race, but can they keep that momentum going into this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. OK, now that we've got some good points on the board, let's continue this form and aim for another top 10 finish. Right, well, here we are then on the grid, ready for the Hungarian GP. Round 13 of the year, and of course, the last race before the summer break in the Haas Road to Glory. In terms of strategy today, though, it looks like we've bumped up the order slightly by virtue of some other cars with some penalties. Just going to put a little bit of extra fuel in just in case. But medium hards, of course, is always the way to go around the Hungara ring. It was always the case, actually, on previous F1 games as well. You know, just so difficult to try and overtake around this venue. But fingers crossed today, though. Starting up nicely inside the point. I think the big rival we've probably got is Lando Norris in front. But, you know, the likes of Perez behind should be quicker as well as... My wheel's not, not working again. I don't get this bug on F122. Right, we're round in the final corner then. About to get ready for the Hungarian GP here today. Starting from P7 though. Definitely feel like, you know, more points are certainly available. We've had two P6s in a row in the last couple of races. So I think if we can match that again today, that'll be a pretty good run. So we head into the summer stretch there. But okay, nailed that nice on the grid. The Let's see if we can try and get the jump the on Carlos Sainz or Lando Norris off the start there. But the last couple okay, of cars so slotting into place. Let's wait and see what lights. we can do then. Ready on the lights for the Hungarian Grand Prix. Round 13 of the year. Try and 
get a little bit of extra revs in. Five red lights, and it is going to be the lights out, and away we go. As well, just a little bit too much wheel spin in the second phase there. Sergio Perez immediately can have a look to the inside there. as Esteban Ocon as well, trying to follow him, but down in towards turn one. Oh, Daniel Ricciardo trying to give me a big old squeeze there, as I think we're four wide on the exit of the first corner there, and somehow we're straight up into P6 of the Grand Prix there. Perez has made up about five spots off the start there. We're up a place as well as Lando Norris just so I get squeezed out there on the exit of the corner. But look at this, Charles Leclerc under pressure as well, straight down into P3. I think, yeah, George Russell must have inherited the lead of the Grand Prix there, but plenty of chopping and changing at the start of the Hungarian Grand Prix here as we try and head up the hill on lap one. Are we going to be able to send it on Sergio? Yes, we are. They're a very, very aggressive move from myself on the Red Bull, man. I mean, back when Haas was sponsored by Rich Energy, William Story would have absolutely loved that one but straight up then into P5 of the Grand Prix there so a perfect little start here in Hungary but now we've got to try to settle down and get into a rhythm of course we know this car's got very very good top end speed most weekends so it will more likely be a question of can we try and hang on in terms of tyre life and through the corners but yeah Sergio Perez is going to be no easy competitor there as it looks like Alonso has really capitalised in the early race chaos as well but round in the final corner we go straight up to P5 then as George Russell takes the lead here in Hungary we probably couldn't have asked for a better start than that as Lando Norris and Carlos Sainz both drop down the order so I did up the AI by three levels after qualifying so we're back running 104 in this championship at the moment I might up it again slightly more it's just Hungary is often a track that the AI are very strong and one that I'm not very good at ever on the F1 games but Sergio Perez already then starting to apply a little bit more pressure as Charles Leclerc doing the same to George Russell at the front of the field we are certainly not going to have any DRS here but Perez not gaining anything down the front straight he's going to have to be a whole lot closer and really try and go for it at some point there is Lando Norris now back up into seventh as Fernando Alonso El Plan might be turning into LQ today I mean there really is just three groups forming in this Grand Prix early on we've got the front runners We've got this weird little gaggle of Perez, Norris and myself, and I think that's about to be Carlos Sainz. Now the Ferrari has got past the Alpine. And then you've got everyone else in this Grand Prix. They're stuck behind the Alpines. It looks like one of the Williams. I'm going to guess it's Alex Albon. Might be just causing a little bit of a queue further back. There is both Williams, actually, apparently doing that early on in this Grand Prix. But, yeah, I mean, we're just settled down. We're not under too much pressure from Sergio Perez at the moment. But, of course, 35 laps here. At the Hungara ring. It can be quite a long and arduous afternoon. Oh, we've got yellow flags out. Someone in the front four's got issues. I think it might be George Russell. George Russell out of the Hungarian Grand Prix there. And that is heartbreak for the Mercedes man there. As he pulls over in a similar spot. So I think it was... Was it Hamilton all those years ago? I can't quite remember. No, sorry. It was Daniel Ricciardo, wasn't it? Um, obviously when Max Verstappen crashed into him at the Hungarian Grand Prix just a few years ago. I don't think George Russell will be giving anyone, apart from his power unit, the middle finger after that one. But George Russell out of the Hungarian Grand Prix, and that now promotes us a bit of P4 then. Remember, we were seventh at the start of this race. We've done really well early on, but maybe... I mean, I think we're optimistic to believe a podium could be possible because Perez and Lando Norris both still applying a lot of pressure, and Sainz is closing in. I'm very much expecting, to be honest, us to get under or overcut in the pits and then just try and bring home sort of P6, P7. I mean we're quite used to Ferrari, Red Bull, Mercedes right at the front of the field but four cars from four different teams currently composing the top four in this race. I mean yeah quite surprised to be honest that Sergio Perez isn't able to apply more pressure to me. It just seems like we're quick enough around the parts of the circuit where we'd hope to be quick enough. We can just try and keep him at arm's length but like I said, often what you find around the Hungara ring in previous games or anything to go by, so if you want to pit lap 15, lap 16, there or thereabouts, you'll find from about lap 12 or 13, your tyres will start to go off and the AIs just won't. Oh, speaking of which, here comes Sergio Perez then as we head back down towards Sermon. Um, 1. The Red Bull having a look up the inside. I'm not convinced there's going to be a lot we can try and do here. A lot of understeer there on the outside of Sermon 1. And Perez just says thank you very much there as you kind of got that weird plateau on the outside of the corner as it kind of just falls away from the racing line there. So we didn't really get sort of get hugged through so when we kind of got pushed away from it as Perez yet yeah, now will inherit P4 then of this Grand Prix. We can't allow the floodgates to start opening but 
Lando Norris has looked incredibly racy this weekend, and what has been a very good McLaren resurgence of recent weeks. Exactly what I'm talking about. Tyres definitely now starting to get chewed up a little. It's just so difficult on them, especially through that middle sector, and then even really, yeah, this final sector as well. You absolutely, you can almost feel the tyres just trying to drag along the surface for grip. It's really are asking a lot from them through these final couple of turns as well. They're just kind of chuck the car in and hope that it sticks. But now Lando Norris all over the back of me. Sergio Perez has, yeah, very much just kind of broken free now. I don't think, I mean, we were never really meant to be in a fight with the Red Bull this weekend. You know, it should be a track that suits their car still a whole lot more than our own. But Lando Norris... Yeah, all over the back of me, but of course he's not in as strong a car and he might be under pressure from sights behind him. Does mean the Alpines, I think it's Pierre Gasly and our teammate Mick Schumacher have dropped back, but they're not miles behind. It is just Lando and I really trying to perform to the best of our abilities. Oh, there we go. Carlos Sainz now getting the jump on Lando Norris, so I'm not too sure what happened there. The two and the former, well, one still a McLaren driver, one of them is a former McLaren driver. They're swapping places. And now Sainz is surely going to be able to apply a lot more pressure to me than Lando Norris was going to be able to. But they're still side by side, actually, So we head at down turn two there. And Sainz now just chops in and will now inherit P6. Well, I think the team are probably going to want us to box in at the end of lap 16 here as we try and put the power down out of the final corner. Sainz and Norris still having a few small issues. They just seem to every once in a while, one of them to try and show the nose and that's costing them both a lot of time at the moment which is allowing me just to sort of keep sights a little bit back but like I said I'm very much expecting at least the Spaniard to try and get past me through the pit stop phase then again Ferrari are probably going to bottle the pit strategy um, but yeah I mean the real focus today of course is just trying to outscore Lando Norris once again making sure McLaren don't feel they've got a good chance in the second half of the year. They have definitely got a quick car now that should be battling with Alpine and ourselves, but they've just had no luck so far this championship. There we go, lap 16. Team want to see into the box. Probably dive in the end of this one, but I might try and just hang out a little bit longer. There we go, Hamilton into the pit lane. All of the top three cars into the pit lane then, so I think Sainz is going to have to stay out another lap there as well. We get a horrible run into the pits. Lando Norris opting to stay out as well there. has been pretty brave on pit entry. Sergio Perez then will inherit the lead of the Grand Prix. As I think we've got, yeah, Fernando Alonso has also dived in. I was hoping we'd come out in some clear air here as I was lucky to actually get the purple score there. No issues, please, Team 2.4. That seemed delayed, but it wasn't, apparently. A lot of cars behind us, though, luckily, into the pits, as we're going to come out a little way behind Sebastian Vettel. Got to make sure we stay out ahead of Latifi and Zhou Guan Yu as we head down through Turn 1. Of course, cold rubber, super difficult to try and get temperature in, but we have to push. Otherwise, Sainz and Norris might both get the overcut. There we go, Mick Schumacher into the pit lane. This outlap hasn't felt horrendous, but it hasn't felt brilliant either. Just got to try and keep pushing here. Sergio Perez is already heading back down and out of the pit lane, but he should be a long way in front of us. The real question is Sainz and Norris. Where are they going to be? There goes Carlos Sainz out of the pit lane. Here comes Lando Norris as well. So Sainz has definitely got the jump on me then as we get back down towards Turn 1 there, but we will stay ahead of Lando Norris. As somehow Sainz, he's pulled like two seconds on Lando over the space of a lap or so there, so I'm not too sure how he's managed that one, but Lando Norris stays behind us for now. Thanks for that, Mark. We kind of already gathered that, but yeah, Lando Norris still behind. Carlos Sainz now up in front, and we're back into my favourite position of recent weeks. We're into P6. Right, end of lap 21 then. Lando Norris now starting to apply a bit more pressure to me, as we've definitely still got the top end speed as we head back in towards Turn 1 there. Sainz is just slowly pulling away in front of me. But again, I don't really think our battle was ever going to be with the Spaniard in this Grand Prix. And I mean, still sat in P6 at the moment. Like I mentioned, my favourite position in Formula 1 at the moment. Two six places in a row could be about to become three on F1 at 22 there. But, yeah, I mean, keeping Lando Norris at bay at the moment, we have got to be a bit careful, I think, of McLaren come the second half of the year. Now, if they get a car that's reliable and both Lando and Daniel Ricciardo deliver some good results, I mean, they could easily become a sort of best of the rest quite consistently, and that might make things very difficult, very close, actually, 
by the end of the championship. But at the moment, you know, we're keeping the developments piling on as well down at Haas. You know, we really are after the big reset in 2022, of course, just trying to focus on bringing the car further up the rostrum. But, I mean, yeah, Ocon and Alonso, though, both still running inside the top 10 there. Alpine have really dropped the ball in terms of development in recent weeks. So it's testament to how good those two drivers both are. The fact they've still been able to score a few points here and there because it certainly hasn't been on car pace alone. As round in the final corner, just keep uh, Lando six tenths back for now as we head in towards the final third of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Things could still get difficult by the end. But Lando Norris, every lap at the moment, just seems to be trying to apply a little bit more pressure to me as we head out of the final corner. As this time around, you can just see the McLaren again gets that little bit closer. We're trying to just save a little bit of ERS. So when he's all over me, we can really try and do something to defend ourselves. That's a horrible run actually out of turn one there. Is that now going to allow him an opportunity? We'll have to force him to the outside. But look at Lando Norris really trying it. We'll give him the room on the exit of the corner side by side through turn three. And oh, Lando Norris will squeeze me, but we will hang on firm there around the outside of the McLaren. Less than 10 laps. Whoa to go there as we ground out over the curb slightly. Just keep our head down and focus. We can really do with these eight points once more. Oh, a horrible line through the final corner there as we've just got a little bit unsettled through the penultimate turn. And will that now allow Lando Norris to get a little bit closer as we head back down towards someone there? There goes the McLaren to the inside. Are we going to be able to try and hang on? We couldn't. Whoa! What's that from Lando Norris? Just planned on never turning in at turn one there. He's done the Nico Rosberg strategy on me. And Lando Norris now moves up into P6 of the Grand Prix. I was expecting a bit of a fairer battle than that from the McLaren driver there. who really just wanted to send me off to the Shadow Realm through the first couple of corners. And now we might have a battle on our hands in the final five laps of this Grand Prix because that has really annoyed me. Right, let's see how close we can stick then to Lando Norris as we head through the final corner. That big, big wobble as we try to put the power down, but somehow we keep it pointing in the right direction. You can see then when we're the one with the DRS, we do gain quite a lot on our fellow Brit as we head back down through turn one. Activate the DRS on the exit. Always difficult to put the power down when you're trying to open the DRS at the same time there. But as we head down through turn two and turn three, Lando Norris will hang on just about for now, but I reckon if we get a better run at that final corner, as you can see that purple through sector one, we are racing on adrenaline and aggression at the moment, and that is not always a good thing, but not always a bad thing either. And in the final corner once more then, trying to put the power down and staying closer to Lando Norris this time as we head back down towards someone there, green sector two and sector three, and you can see we get all over the gearbox of the McLaren down at turn one there. Can we put the power down on the exit? Oh, really, really struggling there to try and put the power down. Almost have to take one hand off the wheel to try and catch it if it snapped round on me. But Lando Norris, you can still see struggling through the first couple of corners there. And I mean, he had to be robust with the move. That's been made quite clear now. Don't, we'll, we'll ignore that. That was horrendous, but I didn't gain anything from it. Um, but still, we're gonna just need to be that little bit closer to Lando if we want any chance. Just stay really close to Lando Norris now as we head through the final couple of turns. Just chuck it in, hope it sticks up through that final corner there in third gear as you use all the curbing on the exit. And surely this time around we're close enough to Lando Norris as we head back down in towards the We're going to have to go for a cheeky little dive there, show the nose. Oh, Lando, big, big lock up on the outside there, feeling the pressure in that moment. And we will now re-inherit P6 of the Grand Prix. The question is, will we be able to hang on to it? to the end of this race. Less than four laps to go now here from the Hungara ring and what has been quite a slow burn of an afternoon has now suddenly got really, really exciting towards the end as we've got no battery left. Lando now, if we can't get a run out the final corner, might find us being a bit of a sitting duck. Round in the final corner then to start the last lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix here and still just trying to keep Lando Norris at bay at the moment. But look at the run Lando's got once more there. As we head down towards someone, Lando Norris to the inside on the final lap of this race. There, we're going to try and go late on the brakes around the outside there. This time round, he doesn't try and send me to the shadow realm. And we'll swoop around the outside there, wheel spin in fourth and fifth gear as we head out of turn one there. As we plunge down through turn two, track falls away from you 
on the exit once more. That might have just been a critical defensive manoeuvre there on the last lap of the Grand Prix. In towards the final sector, though, Charles Leclerc is once again going to extend his championship lead there. Carlos Sainz not having an afternoon to match his Monegas teammate there. Verstappen will likely come through P2. That's why the team flashed up on the engine front. Not too sure. I'm guessing it's the control electronics are getting very, very worn out there. But Charles Leclerc, fastest lap as he comes through to win here in the Hungaro ring. Max Verstappen in P2 ahead of Lewis Hamilton there. Perez will recover to P4 after a disappointing P10 in qualifying yesterday with Sainz in fifth. But as long as we don't do anything stupid through the final couple of corners, we are for the third race in a row going to walk away with the best of the rest result here. This Haas is really coming alive as we head into the summer break, rounding the final corner. It's P6 here at the Hungara Ring, despite a late challenge from Lando. There'll be smiles at the factory after that one. A great race and a real team performance to take victory here in Hungary. So, Natalie, what do you think helped them deliver this result? Well, I honestly feel it was down to the driver and car today. I mean, we could talk driver skill all day, but if you don't have a solid team to back that, you're never going to get anywhere. When you hit that sweet spot of having both an excellent driver and an incredible car, that's when you see results like those that we've witnessed today. Ferrari are at it. And now let's take a look at the driver's standings. Charles Leclerc, currently leading the championship standings, extends his lead even further with this result. Let's focus on the driver of the day. Natalie Pinkham, come on, who do you pick? Well, you can't fault anything that Sergio Perez did out on track today. He drove flawlessly, making him an easy pick. It's time to see how things are shaping up in the Constructors' Championship. Ferrari continue to extend the gap at the top of the table. Meanwhile, good work from Aston Martin this weekend, who pushed themselves further up the order. It's been an absolutely wild weekend of Formula One action. And I can't wait to see what's next. Well, apologies there that you couldn't see Charles Leclerc celebrating on the podium, but I think we've seen it enough on F122 so far. I accidentally clicked a button on my wheel and didn't realise that would be the effect uh, that would come from it there. Charles Leclerc takes home the dub though. Pole position, fastest lap, race of victory, 26 points on the board. Easy work for the Monegas there. Ahead of Max Verstappen and Lewis Hamilton. Perez P4 ahead of Sainz and then myself in P6. They're very, very happy with that. Lando Norris couldn't quite get the job done for good late on in the day, but he does still beat out both Alpines. And yeah, Mick Schumacher even recovered to a point late on in the afternoon. I think Sonoda ran into a few issues late on in the day there. George Russell, unfortunate with a DNF there, means he was the only man not to see out the chequered flag this weekend there. Championship-wise, though, Hamilton therefore re-jumps his teammate. Sergio Perez still ahead of both Mercedes at this stage of the game. We're only 24 points behind George Russell. It might require a miracle, but it certainly isn't impossible for us to close down that gap in the second half of the year there. Charles Leclerc, 47 points now clear of Carlos Sainz as Lando Norris for that good result gets the jump on Bottas. So really now, I mean, Mick Schumacher one point behind Zhou Guan Yu, but surely Lando Norris is going to get the better of the pair of them by the end of the season. Constructors-wise, though, 120 points there leaves us 30 clear of Alpine as we head into the summer break. We've had a really, really good run of form ever since the Austrian GP a few weekends ago. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, please do make sure you leave a like, get yourself subscribed as well, and we will return very, very soon for round 14 of the year. We head to the Belgian Grand Prix. You guys do not want to miss that. None of these videos would be possible without the help of our channel members. So a massive thank you to all of the names you see on your screens currently for helping support the channel. You can join them by clicking the join button down below. And yeah, thank you once again to everyone that continues all the insane support on my work.